dinosaurs. Everyone knows what they are. Or do they? What actually makes a dinosaur? I'd say it's time we sat down, grab our drink of choice, and get comfy while we get nitpicky on what a dinosaur actually is. By definition, dinosaurs were reptiles that lived during the Mesozoic era. They were primarily terrestrial creatures and had physical characteristics that were very different from other reptiles of their time. All dinosaurs are descendants of reptiles, known as archosaurs. These had split into two main groups among the dinosaurs. They were either Saurischia or Ornithischia. All dinosaurs except birds became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago. So, would any ancient reptile be considered a dinosaur? Well, not exactly. It's a bit more complicated than that. To learn the distinctions, we're going to have to get into the nitty gritty of their anatomy. Let's start by taking a look at their skulls. They had numerous perforations on them. These are called fenestra. Dinosaurs looked as though they have always had this feature. Just take a look at Archosaurus, an early member of the Archosaurus. The large opening behind the eye socket is known as the temporal fenestra. The opening in front of the eye socket is the anteorbital fenestra. The most exciting part is, most modern archosaurs still possess this feature. Just take a look at these crocodilian skulls. These animals would all be considered diapsids. This is what defines a group of tetrapods as having temporal fenestra on each side of the skull. Diapsids, meaning two arches, can be anything from modern lizards to turtles. And just for reference, you and I would be considered synapsids, as we only have this one single hole behind the eye socket. In fact, all mammals have this trait. Now, it's all well and good that we can recognize what these holes are, but what about why? It seems as though the temporal fenestra would have helped provide space for the jaw muscles to attach. Another important set of smaller fenestra would be the dual temporal and the mandibular. The dual temporal fenestra is near the top of the skull, and although these are smaller, they'd connect muscles to extend the neck. And as far as the mandibular fenestra, well, more muscles, specifically the jaw muscles. Notice how T. rex has much larger mandibular fenestra than some other dinosaurs. A popular theory for the antorbital fenestra is that it would have acted as ventilation to help maintain brain temperature. I find this theory particularly interesting because just a couple of years ago, there was a very interesting study done on alligators and body temperature. Using thermal imaging, they noticed that when it was cooler, the alligators were trying to warm up. The holes in their skull would light up, indicating a rise in temperature. Yet, later in the day, once it had warmed up, the holes were dark, almost as if they had turned it off to keep cool. And finally, one other theory about dinosaur skulls is honestly weight. A skull with numerous holes would have weighed significantly less than a skull without them. This might not seem like a whole lot for some of the smaller dinosaurs, but once you think about the much larger ones, you can definitely see how this comes into play. Whew, okay, if you're new to dinosaurs, that might have been a lot, so let's take a cute break and look at this adorable dinosaur. Aren't they just so much cuter with feathers? I think so. Okay, so moving on. Does this mean only their skulls set them apart from other reptiles? Well, luckily for us, we have some more anatomy to talk about. You see, dinosaurs had an upright stance with legs perpendicular to their bodies. This is very far off from what people originally thought they looked like. Just take a look at any vintage dinosaur art. You'll see that they are depicted as these sluggish looking salamanders. 
They thought they should be in some kind of sprawling position, simply since they originally thought to just be giant lizards. Why they evolved to have an upright posture is not yet fully understood, but a common theory points to a demand of having more efficient movement on land. A hole in their hip socket allows for them to have this upright stance. This posture might have allowed them to be faster runners with impressive endurance compared to any other reptiles of their time. Without this hole in their socket, they would have likely had to splay their legs to the side, similarly to how modern reptiles look. Okay, so now that we can better identify what is a dinosaur, how do we know what isn't one? How about we start with one that most people would assume to be a dinosaur, pterosaurs. Pterosaur means winged lizard in Greek. These were Earth's first vertebrates to fly. I can already hear some of you asking, I thought they were called pterodactyls. Well, that's the most popular one, at least. There are more than 200 different species of pterosaurs. My personal favorite being Quetzalcoatlus. Just look at this thing, it is ginormous. Pterosaurs are archosaurs, but they aren't dinosaurs. Dinosaurs and pterosaurs separated nearly 250 million years ago, making them pretty distantly related. Despite pterosaurs having diapsid skulls, they are missing a couple of other key features that dinosaurs have. If you take a look at their hip bones, notice how there is no hole in the hip socket. So despite them both being reptiles, these are definitely not dinosaurs. Alright, here's a popular guy you typically see sold with those cute little plastic dinosaur toys, Dimetrodon. Although it may look like a dinosaur, they technically aren't. They lived during the Permian period, 50 million years or so before the first dinosaurs had even evolved. And just take a look at their limbs. Doesn't it remind you of more of a crocodilian stance? While they looked more like dinosaurs, they had certain characteristics that relate them to the earliest mammals and even make them a distant relative of us. Dimetrodon skulls possess temporal fenestra, the single large hole where the lower jaw muscles attach to the skull, just like us humans. It's okay if you thought that was a dinosaur, that's pretty normal for honestly anyone who's not obsessively invested into dinosaurs. Okay, so those aren't dinosaurs, but what about these guys? <laughs> nope. Looks like we've got a bunch of marine reptiles here. Mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, ichthyosaurs. Not a single one of these are dinosaurs. They're also not sharks, or fish for that matter. These animals are more closely related to modern day snakes and lizards, while all surviving dinosaurs became birds. Taking a look at the timeline, they split off and diversified separately from the dinosaurs. Plus, their general body plan is vastly different from archosaurs. Here, let me show you this handy chart to see how some of these animals evolved alongside each other. Now you can tell your friends that not every extinct reptile is a dinosaur. I won't go off on too much of a tangent here, but it honestly gets on my nerves when I see these ancient beings getting compared to sea monsters. As I've said before, these were animals, not bloodthirsty beasts whose sole purpose was to be a killing machine. <sighs> I have a feeling I'm going to be saying that a lot throughout this series on my channel. So, while dinosaurs ruled the land, pterosaurs took to the skies, and marine reptiles reigned over the ocean. As you can see, these were some incredibly diverse groups of animals. We still have so much more about them to discuss, but that will have to be another video. Thank you guys for watching this week's video. I'd love to know if you guys have a favorite ancient reptile of yours. Feel free to comment down below and maybe even consider giving this video a like if you learned anything new. 
Thanks so much again for watching this, and I'll see you guys next time.